April 2015, the day I quit my cushy $100,000 a year job working on Wall Street. I've never looked back since, and here's why. When I entered the real world after college and got my first adult job, I thought I had it made, or so I thought. All my life, I've been taught that hard work plus good education plus good job equals success. I was told that as long as you get good grades, you go to college and you earn a good salary, your life will be awesome. And in school, you learn how to follow instructions, take tests, and you study subjects like algebra, biology, history, literature, but absolutely nothing about how money actually works. Everything about the education system and society is designed to train you to become a good employee and basically just blindly follow this formula of hard work plus good education plus good job equals success. So after college, I had this awesome finance job working on Wall Street, making six figures. I thought I was killing it. And I really did enjoy my job for the first three years. However, after a while, I started to question things. I started to realize how many trade-offs I was making at my job or because of my job. I spent most of my waking hours at work, so I didn't have any time or energy to do other things that I wanted to do with my life. I didn't have time to travel. Everything I did, my sleep schedule, my eating schedule, my social schedule, all revolved around my job. So even though I was making good money, I really didn't feel like I had any control over my time. So clearly something was missing. I really wanted to understand what does it really take to be financially successful, happy, and fulfilled? A couple years into my job, I just knew that there had to be a lot more to it than just getting a good paying job. So what I did was I started going on a quest. I started reading all kinds of books from financially successful masters like Robert Kiyosaki, Warren Buffett, all kinds of perspectives. And here is what I discovered. What we do not learn in school is that earned income is the worst type of income. Yet, it's the only type of income that we're taught to go after in school. Let me explain. Now, there are three types of income. First, there is earned income, which is the one I just talked about. And this is wages, salaries, tips, other taxable employee compensation, such as bonuses, commissions, things like that. So basically, it's paycheck income income from your job. The second type of income is business income, which is money that you get from the profits of a business that you own and operate. And then the third type of income is investment income, which is when you own assets like stocks, bonds, and real estate. And these assets throw off income for you in the form of dividends, interest, capital gains. Out of these three types of income, earned income is the worst one to work for because it's the most heavily taxed type of income and it's the most time consuming to earn. That's why a couple years into my first cushy six figure job, I started to wonder why are we working so hard yet it seems so hard to get ahead. So if you've ever wondered the same thing, then you definitely wanna keep watching this video. Let's first talk about the differences in how these three types of income are taxed. Now tax laws, they always give better treatment towards business income and investment income. So you'll always end up paying the most taxes if you make earned income. There's a reason why Warren Buffett pays less taxes than his secretary. Earned income, which is the kind of income that I used to make at my job, the kind that Warren Buffett's secretary would make, the kind that you get if you were collecting a paycheck. Earned income is always subject to federal income tax as well as social security and Medicare tax. And then there's state tax and city tax, depending on where you live. So that's why if your salary is $100,000 a year, which sounds great on paper, your actual take home pay is gonna be more like $60,000 a year. And the thing about earned income is that the more money you make, meaning the more raises you get, the more promotions you get, the more taxes you're gonna keep paying. Because earned income always follows a graduated income tax schedule. So the higher your salary, the higher your tax bracket. So in New York City, a single person living in the highest tax bracket would pay a total of 51% in total taxes on their paycheck income. That's why making a high salary or trying to get a higher and higher salary doesn't necessarily get you ahead because the tax code really doesn't provide any wiggle room for this type of income. Compare this to how the tax code treats investment income. There are a lot of reasons why income from investments is superior to paycheck income. One specific example is dividend paying stocks. Now, a lot of stocks pay what's called a qualified dividend, 
which you'll typically get deposited into your account once a quarter. Qualified dividends are taxed at 15% in the lowest tax bracket and 20% in the highest tax bracket. So 20% tax on qualified dividend income versus 51% on earned income if you're in the highest tax bracket, you do the math. So all things being equal, I'd rather make my $100,000 from qualified dividend income because I own a bunch of stocks versus making my $100,000 from paycheck income because at the end of the day, I'm going to have a lot more because of how the tax code treats investment income. Not only this, but when you sell your investments at a profit, that's what's called a capital gain. And capital gains tax range from anywhere from zero to 20%. So yeah, that's right. In some instances, you actually can get away with paying 0% on capital gains. This is how the rich make most of their money through capital gains on investments, investment income. So now you can understand why the rich get richer. It's all about the tax code. The key takeaway here is that all things being equal, if most of your income comes from investment income versus paycheck or income or earned income, you'll be able to keep a lot more of what you make because the tax treatment is so much more favorable. It gets even better with business income. First of all, as of right now, the corporate tax rate is 21%, 21% flat. Compare that to an income tax rate of 37% if you're in one of the higher tax brackets. So 37% if you're an individual collecting a paycheck, 21% if you're a corporation. Second of all, businesses, the way they pay taxes is that they pay taxes on their income after their expenses. This is actually the opposite of how you as an employee have to pay your taxes because as an employee, you get paid. So you get your income, then you get taxed on that income and then you have to live on what's left. You have to make do with after tax income. On the other hand, a business gets their income from their sales, products and services. Then they pay all of their expenses and then they get taxed on what's left. So they get taxed on after tax income. This is exactly why I now pay less taxes than I've ever paid before, even though I'm making more money than I've ever made at a job. A lot of what I buy and use every day counts as a business expense, such as a new laptop, you know, newsletters and subscriptions, lunches and dinners out with clients and prospective customers, things like that. Of course, you have to back it all up with receipts and they have to be legitimate business expenses. But seriously, I'm always amazed at how much more favorable the tax code is if you're a business owner versus an individual. Unfortunately, none of us are taught this stuff in school. Even though investment income is way superior to earned income, schools don't give you the financial literacy that you would need in order to make a living on business and investment income. The default advice, the default path is for everyone to get a good job, get a good salary and make earned income, paycheck income for the rest of your life. But following that advice is a recipe for paying a boatload of taxes, the more than anybody and working for the man for the rest of your life. But don't worry because in a minute, I'm going to share some simple ways you can start making more of the other two types of income investment and business income a bigger part of your life. But before we get there, let's talk about another aspect of earned income that makes it not so desirable, which is the time aspect. Earned income is the most time consuming type of income to earn because when you work for a paycheck, essentially what you're doing is you're trading time for money. If you want to get paid, you have to show up for work, do a bunch of stuff from nine to five or even longer hours, depending on what kind of job you have. And the minute you stop working, the money stops coming in. And if you want to make more money, you can either work more hours, like get a second job or take on more shifts, or you can increase your hourly rate by going back to school, increasing your experience and becoming more valuable in the marketplace. But the problem is both of these routes to earning more money still put a cap on your overall income potential. Like even as a neurosurgeon making $500 an hour, your income potential is still capped because everybody only has 24 hours in a day. That's the downside of trading time for money. Compare this to business income. Once you build a business, as long as you put systems in place, you hire good people, then you'll be able to serve more and more customers, meaning you'll have unlimited income potential. So if you can hire good people to run the business for you, you can get out of that equation of trading time for money. Look at Bill Gates, for example, after he founded Microsoft in 1975, he stepped down from the board in 2020 
to focus more on his charity and other things. Yet, he still owns a lot of stock in the company and makes billions off of that. But yet, he's not actually doing a lot of work to run Microsoft. That is a number one reason why business income is so much better than earned income. Now let's talk about investment income. Investment income can be even more passive than business income. Although it takes some capital, some money to get this sort of income going, once you buy a stock or an index fund, you buy it once, and for as long as you own that asset, you'll continue to enjoy dividends and capital gains for years and years to come. There's an example of doing something once, so buying that stock, buying that real estate, and continuing to reap the benefits later. So that is really the epitome of leveraging your time. So now let's talk about how you can incorporate some of this advice into your own finances. On a piece of paper, I want you to make three columns, one for earned income, one for investment income, and one for business income. Then write down all of your income sources and put them in the right category. So if you have a paycheck from a job, put that under your earned income column. If you have say a second job, maybe driving Uber on the weekends, put that also under earned income and write the amount that you get monthly as well. And if you own some dividend stocks, for example, then find out what the dividend is on a monthly basis and put that under investment income. Or if you have a 401k, the funds likely also pay dividends as well. So put 401k under investment income and find out what it is on a monthly basis as well. You can also do everything on an annual basis. So once you've filled out all three columns, have a look. Where is most of your income coming from? Is it coming from all earned income? Do you have any of business income and investment income? Or do you have all business income and not none of investment income? So this is your chance to assess whether you're earning the most leveraged, most efficient, tax efficient types of income in your life. And now that you're aware, you can be more intentional going forward about what other types of income to focus on pursuing. The more business and investment income you have versus earned income, then the less taxes you'll pay and the more freedom you'll have. To be clear, I'm not saying everyone should just quit their job and that earned income sucks. What I am saying is that you should take the earned income you get from your job, which is awesome, and turn that into the other two types of income. So take a portion of every paycheck and invest some of that into index funds, stocks, bonds, real estate, assets that will provide investment income whether you work or not. It really is that simple. Here's a screenshot of what investment income looks like for me. Every so often, I get a bunch of dividend deposits in my account, which is money that I earned in my sleep and I didn't have to lift a finger to earn. Be sure to watch this video for more passive in income investment ideas, but even if all you're doing is putting a percentage of each paycheck into your 401k or Roth IRA, you are building future streams of investment income. So think about how you can convert earned income, which is a type of income most of us start with, and how you can convert that into the other two types of income. If you wanna create some business income, wake up an hour early or dedicate some time on the weekends to build a side business. For example, my YouTube channel is a business. It brings in AdSense revenue for me every single month. However, it took a whole year of me juggling other jobs, living on earned income to make a living, you know, working nights and weekends until this channel slash business grew big enough to actually bring in business income that was enough to replace my earned income. And only then was I able to let go of my side jobs that I was doing to keep this going. Some other business ideas that you can start, you can create an online course, find a product to sell on Amazon, you can start a blog, start an Airbnb business, you can build an app if you know how to code. There are so many ways to start your own business and basically be your own boss. And it doesn't even have to be a full-time thing. It could just be something that you work on nights and weekends or early mornings. There are lots of ways to monetize your skills and your interests into business income. So get creative, don't make excuses because I know you have it in you. As long as earned income is your only source of income and you don't do anything to convert that into the other two types of income, you will never be free. Even if you love your job and it pays well, the truth is that no amount of money is worth working for and trading time for money the rest of your life, especially paycheck income. Because literally your time equals your life and no amount of money can buy back your time slash your life. Time is really the one thing that's more precious 
than money. And the only way to get off that hamster wheel of trading time for money is to understand these three types of income and be very intentional about which ones you spend your time and energy on. We don't learn any of this stuff in school. Most likely we don't learn it from our parents either. Yet it's the kind of financial education that I wish I'd gotten early on, well before I took on hundreds or a hundred thousand dollars of student loans to get a degree, to get a job that wasn't gonna earn the type of income that I really wanted. We don't learn about this stuff in school, nor do we learn it from our parents, yet this is the kind of financial education I wish I'd had early on, before I paid a fortune to get a fancy college degree just to get a high paying job. So that's it for today. If you had any light bulb moments during this video, share it in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. I post new videos every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay in the loop. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.